Oh, yeah. How about you? Have a nice day. Yeah. It's Friday. I have a frog in my throat. <laughs> okay. Adjusting the volume. Adjusting the volume. Hey, y'all. Guess what? This is Grammy Mary, and you are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Freaker Friday evening. It is June the 3rd. And my kitty cat is looking at me like, what the hell are you doing talking to yourself? I do it all the time, sweetheart. You should be used to it by now. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Have a nice day. Wow, I had a day. It was most definitely a freaking freaker Friday. Hey there, circles. I see you. Who's sideways? I'm not sideways. Who's sideways? Hey? Hey? Is that Vins that is sideways? Vins is always sideways. Better than being bass backwards, I guess. But <laughs> here's where I'll be. Let me. Oh, you did a lovely little vid. Okay. I'll check that out later, Vin. Just cuz. Hi, Michael. I see you. I see you. It's a good thing I have the volume shut off on this stuff. Hey, I see Vince. I see Vincent in this video. I will just go ahead and stop that. And, uh, yeah, because I don't want to mess with my flow, you know, my linoleum. Okay, let me go see. Who do I have over here on Fakey Book real fast? I see, holy crap, and only I see Weta and I see Gary. And I know my lovely sister from over there in Ireland, Catherine, is around here somewhere. She and I have been um, sharing little punny things back and forth with each other. (laughs) Because she's just so funny. Uh, Over here on Twitter, thank you ever so much, barman. The multiple versions. Oh, Vince, you got some competition because there's three different barmans here. Barman, I think you've been hanging with Vince entirely too long. That's all there is to it, because now you got the multi-voice thing going on, too. Although, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because you can hash all kinds of shit out in your head. Just don't get into an argument and then lose it with yourself, because that's not cool. People have a tendency to look at you weird, especially when you do it, like, out loud. Just saying. Okay, let me share this real quick. Thank you ever so much, darling. I know, rascal ever oop every no there we go okay settle down young lady just just find a spot and sit because your claws hurt i know where else can you get live radio with someone scolding their key cat <laughs> oh hey i like that tag my clothing style right now is whatever is clean yeah, pretty much, pretty much. You know, I don't, I don't really, I need to get rid of a lot of clothes because there's a lot of stuff that I have that it's like, I might wear that. Oh, I still like that. I haven't worn it, but I still like that. I really need to clean out my closet. I really, really do. Okay, let me go see who's over on that effing network real quick. Would you stop biting me? I don't bite you. And I'm not getting one of those kitty cat rubber tongue thingies to lick you either. Because that's just ack. It's just ack. Okay, I see the lovely Mary B is over here. As well as T.D. Sanders and Bobby and Grimner all over here on that freaking FN site. Yeah, not freaking site. FN site. <laughs> I see Clint. Clint, Clint blah, 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 blah. Yeah, hi Clint. <laughs> Clint Gavern is over here, as well as the lovely Estrella. How are you guys doing? I don't know if you're listening, but I'm saying hey there, hi there, ho there anyway, because I can. And yeah, Grimmy, you know, when you're surrounded by status, all you got to do is just go, hey, I got them right where I want them. Yes, sirree, Bob. Okay, um, now time to go over to that RLM place, because yeah, there's all kinds of way cool RLM people over here. Me and my bot. My bot, 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 You know that sounds like a car that really needs to have some work done on it. Bot, 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 bot,
uh, what, what, what? Okay, hey, looky there, more people showing up. Okay, over here in the RLM, right up top, is Asmo again, because Asmo has officially claimed that position. That's just all there is to it. Nobody else has dethroned him. So he is the king of the RLM hill, or at least the name list hill. Maybe, Grim, you ought to do a little reverse uh, alphabet thing and just mess with him. Put him on the bottom of the list. That would be like, Asmo, what happened? Who did you piss off that you got on the bottom of the list? <laughs> Oh, just got to mess with him. Okay, I also see Barman is here. Hey, Barman, weed me, darling, please. Appreciate it much. It's been a week. really has. And my weeds are growing like crazy, and they're not the fun weeds. I also see the lovely Beth Z is here. Hey there, woman. How you doing this evening? It is definitely evening for you, too, isn't it? And looky there, Grimner is here, who is the creator of... RLM and Barman and all those other fun things like he's a, he's the the guru geek guy over on that effing site too and apparently he just absolutely loves purchasing domain names cool beans I also see the lovely Kate is here and I saw earlier in the chat that she didn't have rain today knock wood yay that's always a bonus round. We got rain last night after I put my garden in, which I did. I, I replanted. Not near as much as prior, but hey, I have stuff growing. I have stuff growing, so yay! I'd, I'll be, I won't be saying yay in a couple of weeks when I'm out there pulling weeds every freaking evening going, damn, why in the hell did I do this shit? But hey, it's food. I will have food. I will have sustenance. At least uh, some food. I can trade. There you go. I also see Trust No One is here. Oh, you could do that. That would be cool. <laughs> oh, we're so evil. We're so naughty. Where'd he go? <laughs> okay, I'll have to say hi to him twice now. That's okay. I also see the lovely Circling is here. Hey there, lady. How you doing this dark 30 evening? It's not quite dark yet in your neck of the woods, is it? Because the sun stays up a little bit later. Because, well, you know, it's summertime, which means, wee, I get to stay up later. I don't have school. Does the sun go to school? Hmm. Ah, that's something I'm going to have to ponder on later. I also see Free Enslaved is here. Hey there, darling. How are you doing? Are you soakied down in your neck of the woods? I know lots of people are getting soakied right now. Um, I also see Ib Don C is here. Did you get soaked, Ib Don C? Because Kate obviously had a day off from the rain, which is a good thing. Because down there, they grow them skeeters as big as cattle. Or at least they're getting that way because of all the damn rain. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. The new and improved version. Who uh, has not been getting rain. How'd you pull that off? Although that's not necessarily a good thing. Because there's times when I'm going really seriously. Can it please just rain? Can it please? So yeah, it's one of those. Yeah, sitting here bitching, pissing, moaning, whining, and groaning. It's kind of like in the wintertime you go, damn, it's cold. Where's some of that summer heat? And in the middle of the summer you're going, damn, it's hot. Where's some of that winter cold? Yeah. Oh, it is finally dark there. Yay! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, it's dry there, free and slave. Cool. Cool. Okay, it's dried out here. It's no longer spongy when I walk in the yard, although I'm walking bare feet. It's awesome. Okay, I also see Juana Taco is here. Hey there, sweetheart. You know what? Sounds good. But I looked in my fridge this evening, and I saw a tomato, and I saw some cottage cheese, and I went, supper. Yes. So, and then some ground pepper, fresh ground pepper, and some fresh ground Himalayan pink salt and yeah supper okay i also see rlm 65703 i think i know who that is yes i do 
I think that's that's somebody that goes to the dork table. That's a dork table. He sits at the head of the dork table is what I'm thinking. <laughs> Holy crap, Asthma, what happened? <laughs> Did you feel the chat move under your keyboard? <laughs> Okay, I also see Solvenor is here, although I'm sure it's dark 30 where he's at, so he's probably sleeping. Yeah, it's my fault. I did it. I told him to do it. I did. It's my fault. What you gonna do about it, huh? I ain't a fear to you. <laughs> Don't go all cap locks on me, dude. Seriously, because I, I will go all uppercase number shit on you. So there. <laughs> I also see Vins is here, and he is going to be the Vinzy middle of the rocket chair freaker ball sandwich tonight. Is that right, Vins? Or am I just blowing smoke out my ass? No, don't look. <laughs> don't do it. Don't go there. Um, I also see Chloe is here. Hi, Chloe. How you doing? I don't think we've been formally introduced. I'm Grammy Mary. I am the psychotic one in the bunch. Um... <laughs> oh grim cottage cheese is good for you it's a very good diet plan helps helps to uh firm up the abdominal section <laughs> cottage cheese and yogurt actually i i swear that's because i mean i'm not really doing any different exercises than what i was doing except for you know yard work but, yeah, I know, you don't want to hear about that. I don't want to talk about it. So, <laughs> in any case, my tummy rolls are going away. Instead of having a spare tire now, I just really do seriously just have like a little soft cider cooler around my six-pack six abs. Don't count them. Because <laughs> there's probably more than... Never mind. Okay, I also see, hey, I'm here. Wow, that is just too cool. I am here. Yes, Grim, cottage cheese gnomes. They will get you. Yes, they will. And looky there, P. Bunyan is here. And still, no blue ox. Damn it. I want to see a blue ox. And l hey there, hi there, ho there. Moosey just showed up. Hey, woman. You are going to be around tonight, aren't you, darling? I hope so. I mean, I realize you have a life, and next weekend you're going somewhere, but you're going to be here tonight, aren't you, hon? I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Unless you don't have your ears on, and then I'm just saying this to the ether, which ether way. <laughs> um, what, Graham? <laughs> You're fermented enough? Okay. Um, oh, when the Brie got drunk last night and threw up in the fridge. <laughs> That's just gross, Cirque. Damn it. I'm still going to eat my cottage cheese, but damn it. I'm going to have that image in my mind now every time I eat it and go. Although, you know, see, I still eat it. You don't like the new start time? I'm sorry, sweetheart. It works for me, though. <laughs> Oops. It's, it's the new old start time. So, oh, well. You're going to the Blue Ox Festival? <gasps> You'll get to see a blue ox? How cool! Uh, sweet! Sweet! Moosey's going to be around this evening, and she's going to go to the Blue Ox Festival. And yay! Okay. I'm happy now, as if I wasn't before, but now I'm really... It's, it's like happy with bonus round. <laughs> Okay, I got some notifications over here. Let me see what's going on. Pussies! Where are the arrest warrants? Uh, huh? Oh. I don't know, Tom Segnet. I have no idea where the arrest warrants are, but you know, every time people go, where's the arrest warrants? I want to say, honey, do we really want to go there? Why can we not just handle things on our own? Huh? Okay. Oh, yay. People are starting to see that video. I shared that video over on Fakey Book, and there really weren't, um, well, this is like the third person that's seen it. Um, I put it, I actually put it in the request for Freaker's Ball this evening, one version of this, where someone puts their 
their smartphone inside their guitar and then plays Metallica. And whoa, that is just so awesome watching the strings as they're, wow. Okay, I'm easily entertained, but yes, I said it, Vins. <laughs> but that's just freaking awesome. Awesome sauce. Of course, I like Metallica anyway, but wow. To watch the, the reverberation on the guitar strings was just like, whoa, this is so cool. Now I want to do that, but I don't know how to play guitar. Besides the fact that I don't have a guitar. Although I could get a guitar and then I could do some strumming and then post it and people would go, what the hell's that noise? But damn, that video, that's cool. <laughs> don't go there, Grammy. Don't go there. It won't be pretty. Okay. Uh, let me check that F inside. You know, I don't think I've... Yes, my dear. Oh! Thank you, TD. TD shared a link for me. Thank you, sweetheart, because I really haven't been saving a whole heck of a lot because, yeah, it's been one of those days. And P. Bunyan, your ox is green. I'm sorry. Have you taken them to see a vet about that? <laughs> oh, that would be sweet, Moosey, if you would take a picture. That would just be absolutely awesome sauce. Okay, uh, what? Oh, okay, I got to see what Grimmy just posted here. Hey, thanks, Grim. Now, see, Babe doesn't look all that intimidating to me. Although, nowadays, is that called a bay? That's so freaking stupid. Seriously, people, you can't put that one extra consonant in there? As opposed to, you know, Babe? Ooh, ooh, it's, that's so strenuous of me to get that last b in there. I just... It's just too much of an overachievement for me. I have to say bay. Why don't you just say ba and get it over with? Um. <laughs> oh, black and yellow trim. All righty. Cool. It's pioneering, huh? All righty. There you go. Yeah, you demand, P. Bunyan. You the man with your green with black and yellow trim. I'm thinking that's more of a deer than an ox. <laughs> that's farm country at least. Um, let's see. Basically, when you make it possible, it's easy. Get into the wild. Ah, ah. Okie dokie. That works. Works for me. Okay. Where was I at besides lost? Yeah. I'm going back over here. Because this is one that TD sent for me. She put it in the shout box over there on that FM site. Extreme hoarding. More than 270 dogs found inside Monmouth's couple's home. Some dogs were giving birth while... A SPCA was trying to rescue them from deplorable conditions. I'm thinking that many dogs in a home, you would be, yeah, uh, you would be very hard-pressed and very tippy-toed to miss all the little landmines that they leave. Yeah. For hours, FIOS1 News has watched crew, excuse me, wow, where'd that come from? Um, has watched crews rescue 170 dogs from a home in Howell in what they are calling an extreme hoarding case. How extreme? Well, the officials say there are at least 100 more dogs inside. Yoinks. And during the rescue, some dogs were actually giving birth to more dogs. Puppies! Although I ugh, cringe at their... Um, yeah, their health. Wow, because, wow. You think puppy mills are bad? Okay, puppy mills are bad. But 
I needed a drink. There are so many more pups inside the house that crews no longer have the necessary vaccinations and treatments for them in the mobile tent they've set up. Wow. This is the worst that we've ever seen, said the Monmouth County SPCA Chief Ross Lisitra. Is that how you say that, Ross? The dogs were discovered Thursday night, but crews physically began to remove them this morning. Ross says that they were living in inhumane, deplorable conditions. Well, they are not human. They are puppies. And when it's inhumane, hmm, let's not go there. They have complete run of the house. They're living in there with their owners, a husband and wife, no children. Well, duh, that's because they got all them fur babies. Although it's animal cruelty, people who do get into these situations don't do it on purpose and just lose control. It's like, but they're so cute. You know, that's the 101 Dalmatian syndrome. But they're just so cute. You know what, sweetheart? Cruella DeVille was just one person. There's lots of other people out there that would gladly take some puppies or at least one. Uh, the chief said that more than 50 members from at least four different agencies have assisted in removing the dogs, most of which have never been outside, visited a veterinarian, or been vaccinated. As of now, there have been no arrests or charges. The SPCA is, um, expects to be at the home throughout the night to remove at least 100 more dogs. Once the dogs have been treated, they'll be up for adoption in hopes of finding safe and loving homes. Please get the word out and get these puppies adopted because, yeah, the Humane Society has a horrible reputation. I'm not sure what the SPCA reputation is, but the Humane Society one is horrid. In dog main conditions, that is true. Yes. Conditions even a dog would not like to live in. Yeah. I'll bet that, yeah. Why they didn't show up sooner is beyond me because I would imagine that place you could smell from blocks away. I'll bet it reeked. Reeked of ode de doggy cologne. Ew, ew, ew. Okay. Hey there, Billy Wrights. How you doing? Oh, and happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. My brother, Dammy Balls, and his lovely bride, Ella May, are celebrating their 33rd wedding anniversary today. Congrats, you two. Yay. Awesome. That is so cool. I made it 33 years. That's as far as I made it. <laughs> They will make it a lot farther. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. We just won't go there. And uh, I also shared a video about a young man that, that built a, a little shelter out in the woods. And wow, it was amazing to watch it. And it took... How long did... How long did it take? Because I asked that question... And my Breda Choey, whom y'all in the RLM chat know, um, w after I asked that, he said, yeah, it looks like it took him about two and a half minutes. Honestly, it seems like a dumb question, but maybe she doesn't know about the counter at the bottom of the video. <laughs> Thanks, Choey, for pointing that out to me, hon. <laughs> wow. I didn't. Let's see. Okay. And Billy Wright said it took a few months total. Just drying and firing each batch of bricks was four to five days. So, ah, thank you. See, Billy knows about some of that stuff. He's built um, the uh, rocket mass heaters and benches and that kind of stuff. So, he kind of knows how that shit works. So, Okay. Cool. Thank you for that input, darling. Now I don't feel so bad. At least someone told me it was longer than two and a half minutes. <laughs> okay. Damn, Twitter is going nuts again. Oh, shit, and there's shitlery again. 
Seriously, people? When is she going to flush? Or is someone going to flush her? Nijoisy news. Thank you ever so much, TD. Brushfire fairy tales. Yay! Welcome to FN, sweetheart. See, people from WT are trickling over. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Um, <laughs> let me see here. Okay. What? Oh, President Obama commutes sentences of 42 more individuals for drugs. Well, sweetie, why don't you just, uh, all of those that the only crime they committed, crime, yeah, right, as if it's a crime, but the only thing you guys deem a crime that they have supposedly committed, um, if it's possession of pot, kick them out. That way you can keep those violent, disgusting, gross, nasty asshats. You know, the ones that, the pedophiles and the murderers, those kind of people. Keep them in jail. And hey, you know what? That also makes room for, well, when you get out of office and, and yeah. There's a lovely room for you, too, in the Gray Bar Hilton. All expenses paid. I'm sure you won't have to worry about buying any more pinstripe suits either because I'll bet you they will supply them for you. Just saying. Okay. Um, I need to... There's my note. Do I want to do my notepad or do I want to... No, I don't want to do that. I want to go... I want to go here. I want to go here. Here, here, here. Um, because I need to do my lovely little, where's it at? <laughs> I saved it. I just don't remember what name I saved it under. Because <laughs> I'm just so good at that. Uh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Did I put it under rocket chair? Did I put it? No, it's not under Grammy. Must be under rocket chair. Nope, not that one. Uh... No, not that one. Where did I put it? I have to find it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, guess I'll find it later, won't I? I just won't worry about it again because it is a freak of Friday and what the hell. Oh, yeah, I got to tell you about my day today. Okay, normally, I mean, yeah, I answer phones, I help customers, all this other fun stuff. Well, my parts guy was gone today, and we had the guy, the older gentleman that, bless his heart, he's he's absolutely wonderful. He used to have his own dealership a um, couple towns over, and he's retired, but he comes in, works every other weekend, and then he works when, when my parts guy needs off. He doesn't handle any service calls, so I got to do that today. yippee i -yay, Cal Patty. And let me tell you, I had a couple of very interesting service calls today. I had a gentleman call, not a gentleman caller, a gentleman call. <laughs> and he was wanting to know if his Chevrolet Venture had um, automatic headlights because it seems like he's always been able to just drive at night and never have to worry about turning on his headlights. But then there was one time that he turned them off and now they won't do the automatic headlight thing anymore. And I said, well, where are you at, where are you at, hon? And he said, in Kansas. And I said, wow, what a coincidence. So am I. Obviously, he did not catch the humor because it just got really silent on his end. <laughs> in any case, um, I said, well, are you anywhere remotely close to our dealership and told him where it was at and he said I don't know I'm on I-70 so I went okay well there you go um so I was trying to explain to him how to do this and I said now with each vehicle it's a little bit different because even in the same model year every damn vehicle is different they can't just be uniform because then well you know people could get in there and go oh I know how to do this you know, you can't have it simple like that. In any case, <clears throat> after this, he said, oh, by the way, I reset my trip meter 
and now my little thing that tells me what direction I'm going and how hot it is outside doesn't work. And I went, okay. And so he wanted to talk to one of the technicians. Well, I couldn't get one of the techs because one of them was elbow deep in an engine and the other one was out on a test drive. So I said, okay, I'll see what I can look up. I'm on the phone with this guy for like 20 minutes trying to figure out how in the hell to explain to him to reset this stuff. And then I just finally said, okay, you know what? I'm going to let you go. I'll see if I can't find a manual or something. Because, by the way, did I tell you? It was a 1998 Chevy Venture van. No, I, you know, if I even if I had the VIN number, I could not pull it up in the GM system because they clear out anything older than 10 years. So it was like, oh, great. I Googled. I found shit. But yeah. So I called him later because I went upstairs. We still have actual paper copies of some of this stuff. And I found a manual. Yay. It's a service manual. Uh, with diagrams and diagnostics and all that other fun stuff. Later, Moosey. But um, I started looking through that, and I called to let him know that I had found a manual because he gave me his cell phone number. Colorado number, by the way. I don't know if maybe he, he, would, he didn't laugh much, so I don't think he had been partaking. But, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um... I called and left him a voicemail, and two hours later, he calls me back. And I spent another 20 minutes on the phone trying to explain to him how to do this stuff while he is supposedly driving down the highway. Now, I say supposedly because there was absolutely zero background noise. No radio, no wind noise, no road noise, no anyone else in the vehicle talking. So I'm wondering... Was somebody messing with me? Probably. But that's okay. I I tried to help him as good as I could. And he did figure out how to do some things in the vehicle. And he said, I just can't get this. And I said, well, darling, you're just going to have to bring it into a dealership and have them hook it up to their diagnostic equipment so that they can figure out why you have lights and yet don't have lights. So... Yeah, I got to be service manager for the day. And you know what? It's not nearly as fun as being queen for the day. Just saying. So, <clears throat> I had a very interesting day. Spent basically pretty close to an hour with one customer on the phone. Uh, unless your ass is made of gold. <coughs> and fart little silver rainbows. Who does that? Who does that? What's this? Along the... What? Oh, okay. Ah, okay. I'm catching up on reading the chat. Okay, attention... Yes, by the way, y'all. Um, dork table tomorrow morning. Directly following Solvenor who is on at 10 o'clock Eastern Time on UCY TV or dot TV. And, uh, yeah, the dork table will be on RLM directly following Solvenor because we don't want to mess with him. And we don't want to mess with Kira, who is on tomorrow afternoon with the bridge. So, <coughs> there you go. <coughs> Dang it. I have a tickle. Gosh darn it, it's a wind. It's been blowing like crazy. So. Okay. Let's see. Attention dorks and dorkettes. This week we will dare to discuss that demon of demons. The one, the only thing we all collectively despise. Yes. At last, it's your opportunity to complain about the scam disguised as society, both at home and in the workplace, or go to the cool kids' table and make plans for that mag magnificent wall. Uh, I don't like the cool kids' table because they're snotty over there. <laughs> okay. Stupid vid. It's okay, Vin. It's okay. It's fun when you're a little sideways. 
That way we know you're just a little off kilter, Vince. Now the video even proves it. You're just a little off kilter. Uh, let's see. And yes, that's true, Circles. He does have lots of rocks for art. He will be a rock star. <laughs> okay, or not. Okay. Let me see. I need to go see if I put it. I don't remember putting anything in my pocket today, but that doesn't mean that I didn't. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah I did yeah I did did y'all see that video of the triplets meeting the garbage truck oh my god those little girls were so darn cute so darn cute they like the garb guys and they give them Gatorade and they're just it's down in Florida and it's just so damn cute Okay, but that's not where I'm going. Right now, I'm going here. Because I don't remember who shared it. Or if I saw it as a link on the side of something. But um, I'm thinking someone over on Fakey Book shared it. Truth be told. But I don't remember who now. Because, well, you know, getting old, don't you know. This is from leafscience.com. Puff, puff, pass, by the way. Study finds that marijuana compounds protect nervous system in MS. Hey! Yes, I am digging for lint. So there. <coughs> Damn it. Um, while marijuana has shown to relieve symptoms of multiple sclerosis, scientists are finding that it may even protect the nervous system from further damage. In a new study, researchers from Israel's Tel Aviv in University and the Weissman Institute of Science found that CBD and THC helped reverse MS-like diseases in mice by preventing inflammation in the brain and the spinal cord. Their results were published in the Journal of Neuroimmune Pharmacology. So, didn't I read something not too long ago about how they had patented a synthetic nechahana? Yeah, I think I did. I'm thinking that, uh, yeah. Let's go natural here, people. The only reason it's illegal is because they can't patent the natural thing. Because, well, God invented it first. Uh, in any case, study co-author Dr. Iwa Kozella explained how inflammation affects MS in a recent press release. Um, inflammation is part of the body's natural immune response, but in cases like MS, it gets out of hand. Our study looks at how compounds isolated from marijuana can be used to regulate inflammation to protect the nervous system and its functions. Booyah! The researchers conducted experiments on immune cells isolated from paralyzed rats and found that CBD and THC could inhibit inflammatory responses by acting directly on the immune cells. Scientists in the U.S. have achieved similar results using synthetic chemicals that mimic the effects of marijuana. See, everywhere else they use the real thing, but here they use the synthetic because, well, synthetic is just not the same as natural. It just don't work quite as well. Sure, they had similar results. What are the side effects of your synthetic shit? That's what I want to know. You know, pharmaceutical companies, the only reason they keep this shit up and have and keep not wanting this to be legalized is because <laughs> they'll be out of business because they don't make cures. They treat symptoms. The researchers conducted experiments on immune cells, isolate, oh, never mind, I already read that part. I want to know how they paralyze the mice because that's just cruel in and of itself. <clears throat> 
In many countries, marijuana-based treatments such, such as Sativex are already, is that how you say that? Or I don't know how you say that. Um, are already, are already been prescribed. How about have already been prescribed to manage symptoms like pain and spasticity or muscle stiffness. Why don't you just say that in the first place instead of making me stumble over words? Damn it. However, recent studies seem to indicate that cannabis may even slow the disorder itself. Booyah! So, if someone is diagnosed early, start treatment immediately, and maybe, just maybe, they will not have all of those horrid, horrid symptoms that go along with that dis-ease in the body. Though more research needs to be done in humans, they believe that cannabis has significant promise. Y'all think? When used wisely, cannabis has huge potential. We're just beginning to understand how it works. Yeah, sure you are. You're just beginning to release information. This is what you're doing. Israel is one of a growing number of countries that have legalized medical marijuana and has conducted extensive research on the medicine. Approximately 12,000 patients have a license to use medical marijuana in the country. I have a license to toke. I'm thinking, I'm thinking the Constitution pretty much says you have the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. So there's your license to toke right there. Don't you think? I think so. Yes. Was drunk? Who was drunk? Okay, I need to Oh, thank you, barman. You're so awesome. Okay, I got to, what? I got to catch up here. Uh, everybody's messing with your last name, Vince. Do you feel picked on? <laughs> Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see, catching up, catching up, catching up, oh, okay, hash, woo, I see how you are, um, how is their lab made shit working here, oh, thank you, well, I'll just, there, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, France cr clinical trial. One person brain dead and five in hospital after drug testing accident. Ah, uh, it was an accident. Yeah, sure it was. They always have accidents. You know, oops. Well, you know, those are un. Fortunate side effects is what that is. That's the new terminology. It's not necessarily an accident. It was an unfortunate side effect. It wasn't necessarily unforeseen, but it was unfortunate. Kind of like lemony snickets and the case um, of unfortunate events or something like that. Okay, let's check this shit out. One person has been left brain dead. So, in other words, they're going to vote Democrat now. And five more have been hospitalized after a clinical trial on an experimental drug went wrong in France. The health ministry said that the serious accident happened on Thursday, stopping the tests and forcing all volunteers to be recalled. Oh, how do you recall a volunteer? Do they get put back in their little volunteer box then? Is that how that works? A statement released today did not confirm the name of the drug being tested, but French media reports claim it was a new cannabinoid-based painkiller. Was it a synthetic cannabinoid? Huh? Marisol Touraine, the Fr uh, French health minister, later said that the pill did not contain cannabis or its derivatives 
but acted on the body's endocannabinoid system. So, see, it wasn't mechuana, but it was something very similar. In other words, it was probably a fucking synthetic ick. By the way, F-bomb. Taken orally, the drug was undergoing a phase one clinical trial at the licensed private European, yeah, that's when you're in the bathroom, laboratory, or lavatory, as we used to call it when I went to Catholic school, that specializes in clinical trials. Oh, see, they specialize in human guinea pigs. Yay! That's why when they recall volunteers, they just put them back in their little cage, and it's okay because they're just happy in there. They have their little iPads. They have their smartphones. They have their computers, and they have Facebook. Yay. The trial aimed to evaluate the safety, tolerance, and... um, pharmaceutical properties of the molecule in healthy volunteers. Hmm. Marisol Touraine wants to express her solidarity and deep determination to get to the bottom of what happened and establish responsibility for this tragic accident. One of the six volunteers is currently in intensive care at uh, the University Hospital where the other five are also being treated. France's medicines agency has launched launched an investigation into the laboratory. I'm thinking, Dr. Frankenstein, where's Igor? Igor, what did you do? That's what they're going to do. They're going to say, Igor, you did it. Igor, you gore. Al Gore. Hey. Okay, let's just share this over here right quick or not so quick because it is me doing this you know that was another thing that came up in the conversation and i seriously this whole time i was on the phone with that guy he laughed once it's like dude you're from colorado and you only laughed once shit either i'm losing my touch or you're not stoned (laughs) one of the two I'm thinking both. Maybe, possibly, I don't know. How's it work? Maybe I was just off my game. I don't know. Oh, okay. Let me find just the right little emoji. There, that's the one I want to use. And I want to use that one. And I want to use, where's she at? There she is. <laughs> With that little nose snorker thing. Okay, I'm going to dig some more lint. (laughs) No, I'm not digging in my belly button. Jeez, oh, Pete, or between my toes. That's jam. Um, Okay, this is from Blacklisted News. I stuck it in my pocket the other day, Um, and I intended to get to it. Oh, wait, no, I stuck it in my pocket yesterday. (laughs) Oops, because it's dated June 2nd. In any case, <clears throat> yeah, it's from blacklistednews.com. Um, it's like magic. Obama calls for more generous social security benefits. Not for U.S. citizens, not for those that have contributed to social security against their will, but more generous social security benefits. In a speech given in Elkhart, Indiana on Wednesday, the POTUS, Dangleberry, called for a strengthening Social Security and even expanding the benefits of the program. Dangleberry's tone on the entitlement program, I call bullshit, not an entitlement when you are the one that funded it. You're just getting your money back or at least a little bit of it. Yeah, that underfunded by trillions of dollars. Yeah, the only reason it's underfunded by trillions of dollars is because everybody taps into it. And only half the people pay into it. Oh, well, that entitlement program went over well with the progressive base, who were still upset about Dangleberry's wavering about a Social Security task force a few years ago. Well, you know, a task force, if y'all are familiar with that term... 
whenever they start a task force, it usually takes five or six years before they even decide on how they are going to proceed with the task that they have been forced to undertake, which is why it's called a task force. Um, oh, and his support of Social Security being linked to a chained CPI, which would effectively lower the cost of living adjustments for recipients. Yeah, yeah, the adjustments got lowered so much this last year that they didn't get any cost of living adjustment. And yet, Congress still did, and they think they need another raise because it's just so hard to live on $174,000 a year. How about you guys get put on minimum wage? And I'm not talking the minimum wage that most people make. I'm talking the minimum wage that wait staff make. You know, that minimum wage where the lovely little loophole that you put in there to where, you know, if they make enough in tips, whomever they work for doesn't have to pay them to be there. Oh, but wait, they have to also share their tips and they also have to report them and be taxed on them. But hey, you know, the business doesn't have to pay them a wage. And so like it's a win-win for the business because they got excellent wait staff because those people have to be excellent in order to make a living at what they're doing. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking Congress and the Senate and the POTUS and pretty much anyone else who draws a government paycheck all needs to work on the tip basis. If you do a good job, we'll give you a tip commensurate, commensurative of the uh, how well we thought you did with doing your job. If the job you're doing totally sucked ass, I'll give you a penny, maybe two. Just because, well, you know, there's not a penny's worth of copper in there anymore. So, hey, I'll give you a couple of new pennies. How's that sound? They're shiny. But <clears throat> if you do an excellent job, then I'll tip you 10, maybe even 15% of the tab. Maybe. Maybe. Of course, that tab's going to have to go down just a skosh, you know, because that whole tax thing. Mm. Not real happy about that. I'm the one that has to work for it, and you're the one that stands there and says, you give me my money or I take your house. Is that not extortion? I think it is. You give me my money or I take your car away. I think that's extortion. You give me your money or at least a percentage of it or I just seize your bank account and take all of it. I'm thinking that's extortion. But hey, you pay taxes so we don't have tanks driving down the streets. Oh, wait. Those MRAPs. Yeah. Those coming to a town near you. <laughs> wow. Whatever happened to that whole argument of I wouldn't have to worry about having armies and troops and tanks going down my streets and that's why I pay taxes. And yet every time I pay taxes, I have more armies and troops and that kind of... Wow. Off the uh, tangent, back to this. Of course, the plan called for the wealthiest Americans to pay for it. <laughs> really? Which resonated even more. Sure, they're going to pay for it. The White House downplayed that the comments were part of any type of pressure the president had been under from liberal groups, saying it's been Dangleberry's stance all along. No, his stance has been... In order to stand when he pees, he has to straddle the potty. Yeah, I said that out loud. POTUS Dangleberry called for expanding Social Security on Wednesday, prompting progressive groups to declare victory, victory, America, after they tangled with him over a plan to save costs in the entitlement program. My dying ass, it's not entitlement, it's give me my money back program. And not only do we need to strengthen its long-term health, it's time we finally made Social Security more generous and increased its benefits so that today's retirees, future generations, get the dignified retirement that they've earned. Okay, I kind of agree with that, but then again, considering where it came from, I'm going to have to ponder that because I'm thinking, yeah, somewhere in there, 
My name is getting changed to Ben Dover, and I'm not a guy, so I don't want to have Ben for a first name, okay? Dangleberry said in, in an economic call to arms in Elkhart, Indiana, we could start paying for it by asking the wealthiest Americans to contribute a little bit more. How about you talk to Dick Cheney, because I hear he made a shitload of money off the Iraqi war. There you go. He's one of the wealthiest Americans out there. Tap into some of that slush fund that he's got going on. Tap into some of the slush fund from all of those companies that have their official place of business offshore so that they can hide that money that they're making. Because don't you know, all the expense goes on in the USA. All the profit is outside. Yeah. For many years, dating back to before he became POTUS, Dangleberry has made it clear that we need to strengthen Social Security. I'm thinking the best way to strengthen it is, number one, get your grubby fingers out of it. That's not your piggy bank to dig into anytime you damn well please. That's number one. Number two, privatize it. As in, give it back to the people that contributed. And the way I see it, <clears throat> whomever contributed money, give them the amount of money that they have contributed throughout their lifetime, plus interest, and let them control it. And you know what? If they do a shitty job of controlling their money, well, let's hope they have family that cares for them. <coughs> Does that sound heartless? Does that sound cruel? I'm thinking that if people were forced to take responsibility for their stuff and for their own retirement, they just might actually step up and do it. Or at least some of them will. More than you realize will. Until you get the shysters that are out there. And trust me, there are shysters out there. Because, yeah, I have personal experience. So, yeah, I know about the shysters. <sighs> Been down that road. Learned some lessons. Yes, I did. Life is always full of lessons. In his speech today, the POTUS reiterated that as we ensure the program's solvency for generations to come, we should also enhance benefits so that Americans retire with dignity. Yes, I think we should. I think we should also take care of the veterans that bought into the bullshit and came back in pieces, whether that is physically or mentally or both. They should also be taken care of, don't you think? We're losing more to suicide than we have in war. Those people need to be taken care of. But while Dangleberry repeatedly called for ways to shore up the Social Security Trust Fund, and you guys are all trust fund babies just milking it, including possibly taxing the rich, possibly, you know, that's one of those lovely little, oh, we might maybe possibly almost kind of sort of do something, or we might just be saying this just to make you feel better until after the election, and then we're changing your name. How do you like Ben? Yeah, he, um, <clears throat> he said that as he ran for re-election in 2012, that he would not slash benefits or privatize the program. Well, you already didn't slash benefits. You just did not allow it to keep up with the cost of living, which if you would have allowed it to keep up with the cost of living, a lot of elderly folks would not be eating dog food and cat food right about now. And they would be eating more than one meal a day. However, it's unclear whether he has officially backed expanding benefits. I don't think you need to expand benefits, sweetheart. I think you've already got entirely too many people tapping into that that did not contribute. Just saying. In fact, in 2013, he endorsed a plan to change the way cost of living increases are measured by Social Security. Oh, yippee, here it comes. To a formula known as chained CPI. That would have slowed the growth of checks relative to inflation. I'm, mm, I'm not sure I like this. <clears throat> Progressives are crediting Bernie Sanders for Dangleberry's pivot to bringing the issue of Social Security back up. Because, well, yeah, Barry, at least every damn one of the candidates, seriously, every damn one of the candidates has points 
that make you go, all right, I can see that. Every damn one of them does. I'm not going to argue with that. But just because you have one needle in each uh, candidate's haystack doesn't mean you want to move the whole haystack into the White House because the rest of that is just chaff and it chafes you and me. Sanders also spearheaded a letter in 2015 that was signed by Democratic members of Congress, including Elizabeth Warren, because she's a special little flower as well. She's a special little Native American flower because that's what she identifies as. Thank you for starting that whole bullshit there, Ms. Elizabeth Warren. <clears throat> and that was calling on Dangleberry to fill gaps in shrinking retirement plans by expanding Social Security. Something Dangleberry spoke about on Wednesday when he said that fewer and fewer people have pensions that they can really count on. And why is that? Because you bail out the son of a bitches that are screwing over the pensions. And you bail them out with our tax money. So it's not bad enough that they already take our money. But then you bail them out with the tax money. And then you don't make them pay it back or you don't make them use it to refund all of the money that they quote unquote lost. Oops, bad investment. My bad. Sorry. Oh, pay no attention to this really heavy armored truck that I'm driving off in. Yeah, it's full of flint. Yeah, lint. Uh-huh. It's that stuff that eventually turns into lint. If you're allowed to keep it in your pocket long enough, it start, kind of starts, yeah. <sighs> if anyone has ever wondered what impact the grassroots political revolution behind Bernie Sanders is having on the future of the Democratic Party, the sharp, populist, progressive turn that President Dangleberry made today on Social Security expansion should answer those questions. That was said by Democracy for America Chairman Jim Dean. Wow. I'm thinking smoke and mirrors is what I'm thinking. Of course, the wealthiest Americans don't have pockets deep enough to pay for all of the unfunded liabilities of the federal government. No one does. No one does. Which is why we need to just kind of do a big old etch-a-sketch on all that shit. And do you know who's going to lose out on that? Do you? Do you? The bankers. Oh. And no, it's not the local Joe banker, although they will be made to pay for it, which basically the way they'll pay for it is by taking your money. But, yeah, it's in big bankers. They're the ones. They're going to lose out on all that interest from all that make-believe stuff that they created and then loaned to us and said, oh, by the way, this is make-believe. We're just creating digits on a computer screen, but you're going to have to pay us interest on that make-believe digits on computer screen anyway because we wrote the rules. <laughs> and somebody that's been dead for a long time signed up for it and said, you're on the hook for it. Wow, don't I feel special. Incidentally, this is the problem that former Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan continues to hammer on in his atonement tour. <laughs> sure, an atonement tour. I don't see him handing out any money. No, I don't. I'll go ahead and share this one as well. Yeah, I just kind of ranted and raved. Um, you know, Circles, it might be. Circles said Social Security is an insurance product, not an investment product, right? Hedging the life mortality and lifespan risk, a.k.a. the mortal mortality deriva derivative. See, now you understand all of that stuff, Circles. But, uh... People are forced to pay into it, which just really pisses me off. And yeah, it is kind of like an insurance because, hey, um, you know, you pay insurance on your house and then when you make a claim, they drop you. <laughs> 
you pay insurance on your car and someone crashes into you and your insurance goes up or they drop you because well you're supposed to just pay it in you're not supposed to collect on it how are we supposed to stay in business do I give a shit if you cannot afford to pay back what you said you're going to pay back don't get in the business that's what I'm thinking I'm thinking the whole thing needs to be flush, but that's just me. Hey, that's true, Flash. I hadn't. I'm catching up on the yeah. Catching up on the chat. No license required to light a match. That is true. That is true. Um. And Circle said those pesky cannabinoids. Look out for the zombie GMO cannabinoids. Them are out to eat your brain. Yes, they are, sweetheart. Yes, they are. Hi, Spacey. How you doing, sweetheart? I see Vinny showed up, too. Now we have multi-Vin. <laughs> um, let's see. Shoveling shit, shoveling sugar. All pays the same, guys. In other words, it don't pay shit. And yes, Social Security is a Ponzi scheme. And actually, if you listen to um, Milton Friedman, it's the poorer people that actually get screwed in that deal because <clears throat> most of them start working at a younger age so they contribute for longer and yet their life expectancy is not as long because they can't afford to do the health that the richer pe richer people do. So in the aggregate, it, the, the poorer people that really need Social Security as a retirement fund don't live long enough to s collect. Which makes sense. I can see how that lovely little thing worked out. But it's for the children! Okay, way back then, that's not what they said. It was to help those in need. Those that needed a leg up. By the way, we're taking your arm to give them a leg up. Oh, oh, an arm doesn't work for a leg? Too bad, we'll take your leg too then. You don't mind, you have another one. Yay. Okay, um, relating struggle. How much Federal Reserve Bank President made? I want to know how much he made. Thank you, Grim. Many Vins? As opposed to many Vins? <laughs> um, okay, let me... What? Okay, Twitter. I know. I'm just going to close Twitter because it's just going nuts on me. Damn it. And I'll close that. And I'll go here, and I'll do, because I don't want to lose my stream, don't you know? Okay, where is, it's magic, fuck you, Dangleberry. Put there, oh, close that. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm just, I'm trying to stay caught up in you know, Vince, you need to show me how you do that multi-vin kind of thing. Because there's times when it's like, I got notifications all over God's green earth, and I'm just kind of, okay, that's natural for me to go, but still. Right. Okay, I'll share that one. Now I'll go to, thank you, Graham. Relating to the struggle, here is how much Federal Reserve Bank presidents made in 2015. Oh, joy, oh, bliss. Well, you know, they're worth it. And actually, you know, we can sit here and piss and moan and bitch and groan about this shit all we want. But until you tell whomever the stockholders are, you know, hold a fire to their feet and let them know this is bullshit, you assholes. Quit making these golden parachute deals with these people. Because seriously, I really don't know anyone who is a pencil push pusher um, who is worth, let's see, the kind of money that these people are making. I really don't. 
<coughs> excuse me. As the economy struggles and wage growth stagnates, actually, it's not stagnating, it's reversing. Everyone, at least in real dollars, everyone can rest easy knowing that the Federal Reserve Bank presidents are getting paid quite nicely for all of their efforts. Yeah. While wages grew 2.6% at best in 2015, Fed presidents saw a 4% average salary increase. I'm not asking him for computer advice. I'm wanting to know how he has the multiple versions of him all over the place so that he can keep track of all this shit. Although, never mind. <laughs> oh, cross-eyed. Okay. All righty. Hey, Mary B. How you doing, sweetheart? I hope to sleep in tomorrow morning. I really do, but I think my dog will wake me in round six. Oh, well. Just means I'll go out in the yard earlier. I may actually get something done prior to the dork table. Hey, bonus round. Okay, back to... Kia, I get sidetracked easily. Yes, I said your last name again. Vans. <laughs> Change your name so I don't say it all the time. That would be so much nicer or easier. <laughs> Just saying. Okay, where was I at? Okay, Fed president saw a 4% average salary increase. And before anyone says that the presidents took one for the team, taking a pay freeze from 2011 to 2013. Aw, can I get a collective? Aw, it was made up for in 2014 when a 6.6% increase was awarded. Yeah. Took it in the shorts, didn't they? Sure they did. <clears throat> New York's Williams, uh, William Dudley tops the list in 2015, pulling a cool $466,500, followed by San Francisco's John Williams, who made $422,900. The lowest fa paid Fed president was St. Louis James Bullard, who pulled down a meager $339,700. Excuse me, $700. I'm thinking I could live very comfortably for 10 years on that lowest pay. I could. Seriously. Minimum 10 years. And that's paying off everything I own, which really isn't a whole hell of a lot, and buying this place that I live at right now. Yeah, I could do it. I could do it. 10 years. Easy. Easy. I, I'd be sitting high on the hog. The Fed Board reviews Reserve Bank officers' salaries annually, and each bank has compensation caps with the highest set at $469,500 for Boston, New York, and San Francisco. Oh, well, you cut my pay to that much and I'm going to quit. Presidents received pay increases each January and got a special adjustment, you know, rearranging the family jewels kind of thing. In 2015, as the Fed transitioned from its previous policy, Bloomberg reports, for those that struggle to make ends meet every single day in this recovery, that is uh, producing minimum wage jobs, just know that those at the Federal Reserve are working hard each and every day to earn their paycheck at the golf course, avoiding those monster alligators that are roaming the golf course, waiting to devour an unsuspecting golfer. Yeah. Or banker. You know there's some things even alligators won't eat. Sharks won't eat them either. And sharks are known as the uh, garbage guy of the ocean. But yeah, even sharks won't eat a lawyer or a banker. But they're doing this to create a better future for Americans, don't you know? <laughs> the few, the poor, the Americans. Yay. Yay. I feel special. I don't know about anybody else. But I feel special. 
Okay. There we go. Yeah. Right. And I'll do this one. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's the way I feel. They make the money. I want to go. Ah! Okay. How's my stream doing? It's doing okay. Yay! Okay. Uh, oh, holy smokes. I got notifications over here on this effing plate. Hi, Penny. Hi, Fraser Flav. How you guys doing? Yeah, 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 yeah. How about asking all the volunteers to kill themselves for profit? Mm. Well, you know, that's like going out and buying life insurance. Ooh, I'm going to insure my life and hope my loved ones don't find out how much I'm worth dead. <laughs> that's... That whoever thought of selling people life insurance. Wow. Wow. Good job there. <laughs> Oy. Okay. Go back to home. See what's going on on RLM. Oh, that was computer advice. Oh, thank you very much. And in all forms of the use of easy, easily, easy, and so on. Oh, the, do you, he does have it trademarked? That totally. Wow. That's what I mean, Grim. The few, the poor, the starving, the wretches of society. Those that will do the dirty work for you. Yes. You know what? They're going to find out that those that will do the dirty work won't be doing the dirty work for them because they'll be doing their own dirty work just to try and stay alive. So, yeah. If it comforts them to think that they will be able to do that shit. Hey, I got to check my fakey book. I got notifications over here. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Hi, Becca. How you doing? Oh. Darn it. My Uncle Don just passed away. Damn it all. <sighs> He's not been well for quite some time. Darn it all. <sighs> Shit. I will have to message my cousins. Okay. Well, Uncle Don, are you listening, hun? You were always quite the prankster in the family. Actually, you were the prankster of the family. I hope you're listening in, darling. Um. Hmm. Let's see, what do I have? I need to find something fun, something silly. <sighs> Here we go. I don't think I covered this the other day. But I did see a video today of a gal that made one hell of a speech on the vaccination bullshit going on in the world. And I did a little bit of a diatribe when I shared it. Okay, this is from healthnutnews.com. Citizens in Dallas are refusing to vaccinate their kids. Booyah! Bonus round. According to the Denton County Immun Immunization Partnership, vac uh, Partnership, vaccine rate exemption rates have increased by 78%. I think I did cover this the other day, didn't I? Did I cover this the other day? This sounds vaguely familiar, like maybe I had always, hmm. Apocalypse? No, that's alpaca lips. And you have to be really careful around alpacas because they spit. Just saying. I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. Yes, that's true, Grimmy. They don't ever say which Tuesday, though, do they? Hmm. Oh, well. I think I covered this the other day. I think, I think, I think. Uh, parents are making other choices, and in neighboring Tarrant County, 
There have been more than 4,000 exemptions filed in the past year. All this, as you can imagine, is making the immunization partnership of Dallas-Fort Worth nervous enough to call an emergency meeting in the hopes of preventing the vaccination rates from dropping further. And why do you need to be concerned about the vaccination rates? Because don't y'all know, and this is the argument I have been giving people since like forever, if you're concerned that, uh, say, I, which none of my children are young enough now to have to worry about that, my grandchildren, I hope my daughter is not doing that with them anymore. I've sent her enough literature and her husband enough literature, and they're both intelligent individuals. I hope they aren't doing it, but in any case, if you are so concerned about your child contracting a disease that it's been immu immunized for from a child that possibly will contract that disease because they have not been immunized for it, why the hell was your child immunized? If you are concerned that your child might contract that disease from an unimmunized child. Is that not what that shot is for? I'm thinking it's called shots for a reason. They are shooting you up. You are being shot at from multiple directions. And uh, it pretty much, yeah, the numbers started from that video that I'd listened to earlier and shared, it went from like 24 and actually when my girls were little, it wasn't near that many. It was like 24 vaccinations that, that children were supposed to have from birth to age 18. Now it's like in mo or in a lot of places, it's over 60 from birth to age six. And they wonder why children are having unfortunate adverse reactions. Ooh. Note they aren't saying unforeseeable. They are saying unfortunate adverse reactions. Hmm. Well, it's only one in a thousand. Okay, how many children get vaccinated? Only one in a thousand, you start extrapolating that out and it gets pretty damn ugly. Um, oh, you enjoy critical thinking from a distance? Wow. That's true, Grim. Thinking is hard and so is parenting and so is adulting. Um... <laughs> Oh, goodness. Progress. Rick em, rack em, rack em, rack em. Get that, it, get that uh, immunization and really fuck them. That's, there you go. You're going to feel a little prick. That's because you're a big prick. That's why. Okay, I'm going to share this over on that effing site. I don't remember. Yeah. Say the memory's first thing that goes. I'm thinking I covered it before, though. Which, uh, shit. Shit, fuck balls. That is not what I intended to share. Did I share that already? Yes, I did. So, cancel. Whoa, stop it. Stop it. My mouse just went crazy. I hate when that happens. Okay, where's that at? We'll do this again. Copy. Paste. Now do it right this time, damn it. Don't make me take advice from Vince. <laughs> I really don't want to go there. Because he's, he's like this crazy person. I know he is. I know that guy. Okay. Let's see. And do this one and do this one. Whoops. And I need to space. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. Don't you just love it when I just talk to myself? Uh-huh. I'm sure you do. 
Okay. I'm going to go over to Oopy. Because, well, I haven't been there for a while. So, off to Oopyville I go. I may need to go to the pig, too, because, wow, it's getting close to that time. So, let me open up Oopy, and then I'm going to open up the pig, because I haven't been there for a while. Um, Bear tries to end sparring match by hiding behind tree. <laughs> you can't see me! You know, that's like when you put your hands over your eyes. You can't see me! Okay, where's the pig? There's the pig. I want to see what happened this date in history. Yes, Vins, I'm picking on you, but that's because you're a nose. And you're so pickable. That's why. Uh, World Party Preview Launch. Rounding the Edge on Real Liberty Media. Bundy Ranch. Vinny with guest Tom Lucavara. Stuart. Tom Lucavara Stewart. Ah, Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam. Ah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. If you still awake. Hmm. Who's your nigga? Trump praises my African-American support. Oh, good Lord. Hmm. Yeah. Trump will still skin. Okay, you have to be patient with me. I'm just a guitar player. I didn't go to college. I was too busy learning stuff. That's from the Nudge. Oh, looky, he has Cupcakes Nation. <gasps> what do you have there, Hambo and Porkus? It's the Cupcake Corner for the sniveling snowflakes of the world. Ah, this is an extra special page, all right. We promise to address each and every case of hurt feelings on an individual basis. Really, we will. The free state of pig has come to the conclusion that no one and no so-called protected minorities have a monopoly on hurt feelings and a list of grievances eager to voice their disgruntled issues to the expense of others. Safe spaces, Black Lives Matters rioters, Basement boys living off of mommy's dime that have all uh, the answers. Gender-bending perverts and prima donnas wanting access to opposite-sex restrooms and showers in the name of special rights because that's how I identify. You know what? I identify as a multimillionaire. And I'm thinking that if cells were money... I would be a multimillionaire. So, from now on in my world, cells, as in the little things that make up your body, are money. They are collateral. And I am a multimillionaire. So there. My logic works for me. Anyone's inalienable right are already guaranteed in the United States Constitution. So what's the problem? The problem is, is that their petty issues hurt our feelings. What? We can't utilize our First Amendment rights of free speech and dissent to display others' acts of idiocy and infantilism? <gasps> That's what this page is dedicated for. Yay! Let's take a stroll down Reality Street. Too real for some, but very piggish and entertaining for those of a rational persuasion. Caution. We are not responsible for your uncontrollable outbursts of laughter or choking on the little spittles we add as toppings to these pig-worthy cupcakes and lunatard escapades into their own twilight zones. Oh, let's see what this is. This is under the pranked category. I got sidetracked. I love this. Thank you guys for doing a whole new page. I love it when you do a new page and I just hadn't gotten to it yet. Damn it all. In Westwood, Ohio, someone could end up facing jail time for an apparent senior prank at a Cincinnati area high school. Police say someone posted a photo letter on Facebook that appears to be from the Cincinnati Public School District. The letter calls for mandatory inspections of students' private parts. Warning, the text from the letter below might be offensive to some readers. <laughs> Gutty. 
The Cincinnati Public School District is required by law to conduct mandatory penis and vagina inspections on all students, faculty, and staff at Gilbert A. Dater High School in accordance with the City of Cincinnati Health Codes. This year's penis and va uh, vaginal inspection will take place Friday, May 20th, 2016 at 8.20 a.m. All circumcised males should report to Ms. Fields' office all uncircumcised males to report to Ms. Chris Mom's room. And all females report to Ms. Blair's room. There will be only one makeup day on Monday, May the 23rd. The school district says it doesn't know who posted the bogus letter, but it will take disciplinary action once those culprits are found. These kids could technically be prosecuted, WXIX-TV legal analyst Mike Allen said. Yeah, they could technically, that's like possibly, almost, kind of, sort of, maybe. Forgery states that if you forge writing that appears to be genuine, it's a felony to the fifth degree. Okay, anyone that took that seriously is a fucking moron. Okay, and what are you going to do? I am sure the school year has ended by now. Are you going to give them in-school suspension or five days out-of-school suspension? Oops, oh darn, school year has ended, and it was a senior that graduated. Oh, sucks to be you when you want to punish them, don't it? Wow. Wow. This is just too fun. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share this link because I like this. Y'all can peruse it at your leisure. Um, what? Offering black people free trips back to Africa. <laughs> what? Oh, good Lord. Poor Johnny Depp. You know, someone really needs to give him a little bit of tough love. <laughs> or not. Or maybe just a spanking. <laughs> okay. Back to the pig main page. The word of the day, Brack Obama. Although it's, pr it's spelled Barack, but I much prefer to pronounce it Brack. The answer to that nightmare-inducing question, what would happen if a sworn enemy of the USA became POTUS by burying an America-hating past? Yeah, that's true. Uh, quotable quotes. Today, a feminist asked me how I view lesbian relationships. Apparently, NHD was the, wasn't the right answer. Huh. <laughs> Ew. And today's question is, who is more likely to shoot POTUS shrillery, a pissed off citizen or her own secret service detail? Ooh, ooh. Anyone taking bets on that one? I don't know. That's a toss up. Hmm. Okay, let's go to this date in history. Today in history, June 3rd. 1540, Hernando de Soto becomes the first European to cross Appalachian Mountains. Can't explain his overwhelming urge to rush home and marry his sister. <laughs> Ew. This date in history, 1937, legendary slugger Josh Gibson nearly hits one out, slams a prodigious home run that bounces a mere two feet below rim of Yankee Stadium, 580 feet away. Damn! That's a hell of a whack. This date in history, 1942, Battle of Midway Island, the turning point of the Pacific War, begins yippee skippy. This date in history, 1946, the Surrender Monkeys get this one right. Road test first bikini bathing suits. <sighs> yeah. Seriously? Okay, 
No, just don't go there. Don't go there. Whew. This date in history, 1948, boundaries of human knowledge expand when 200-foot hail telescope dedicated at Palomar. This date in history, 1969, last episode of the original Star Trek series airs on NBC. Shut it down, Scotty. There is no sign of intelligent life here. This date in history, 1973, Rusky supersonic airliner Tupolev, or Tupolev 144 flunks subsonic flight, crashes at Paris Air Show. Oh, that sucks. Had a few crashes yesterday as well, didn't we? And finally, this date in history, June 3rd, 1980, the Donkey Clan demonstrates its sense of humor. Gives a quivering pile of yellow spine jello, Jimmy Carter, enough delegates for a re-election trouncing antics. Hmm. And yet, I look at Jimmy Carter and I think, nope. Definitely not the worst president in history. Definitely not. No, definitely not. Yeah. Okay. Y'all can go to Pig Gazette and check out the rest of the stuff that they got on there. They got all kinds of, ooh, aside from all the feel-good gobbledygook and maybe some reading, writing, and arithmetic. Ooh. What are you talking about? Oh, preschool. Ah, they're going nuts on the school. There you go, guys. Get her done. Okay. What's going on on Fakey Book? Oh. Thank you, B. Yeah, this, that video when I shared it, I just, I'll just give you the little ranty that I put on it. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get your vaccines right here. Pay no attention to the disclaimers. Pay no attention to the data others are finding that we buried. Shame those that do not comply. After all, if they don't get their shots, your child might get sick. Never mind that our whole selling point is that when you get the shots for your kids, they will be immune to that dis-ease. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me again how forced vaccination is a good thing. Forcing people to purchase a medical product. Oh, wait, they did that with Obamacare, too, didn't they? Oh, sure, they wrapped it in medical product. In insurance. It's insurance. Until we go to, um, let's see. It's insurance until we go to the Supreme Court. And then it's a tax. Because Congress can do tax. They can't force you to buy insurance, but they can do tax. And, oh, all of a sudden, it's no longer insurance. It's a tax on those that don't buy insurance. Extortion. Yes, I'm in the gutter, Grim. I'm in the gutter. And I'm not even bowling. Damn it. I hate when that happens. Okay. Where, where, oh, where are you tonight? Why did you leave me here all alone? Who else remembers that song? <laughs> I searched the world over and thought I found true love. You made another it. You was gone. <laughs> it, wow. Random shit just pops out. I don't know what to tell you. Hmm. I'm scrolling, scrolling, scrolling on Oopy. Oh. Oh, oh. Hey, look, a giant inflatable poop placed in a uh, Spanish town as a message to dog owners. Really? <laughs> I want that at giant inflatable poop. That looks like something to bounce on. I could be bouncing on shit. This is over on Oopy. A giant inflatable poop placed in a Spanish town as a message to dog owners to please police your poo. 
Yep, a town in Spain installed a giant inflatable poop in order to discourage dog owners from abandoning their pet's excrement in the streets. If it's in the streets and you drive over it, what are you going to do? Oh, no, I've got poop on my tire. Honey, you probably got worse on your tire than poop. Just saying. The town of, yeah, that town shared photos of the inflatable poop and encouraged residents to share photos of the massive message to dog owners with the hashtag no mas casca, cacas, no mas cacas. Really? Wow. The town council spokes, spokesman, Angel, Angel, told the local <laughs> that uh, the town has about 6,000 dogs who can produce about 1,100 pounds of excrement every day. Wow. Sounds like a pretty shitty predicament to me. That is more or less what this inflatable represents, the amount of poo left on the streets across the town each day. We are asking dog owners in a fun, non-aggressive way to realize the importance of clearing up after their pets. Well, it really isn't that big of a deal. Just take, a, take an old grocery bag with you and just turn it inside out, put your hand in it, and reach down, grab the poop, pull it off over your, and tie it in a knot. And then if they leave another poo, you have a knot tied in that so you can you can do it. It's okay. It'll work. I used to have to do that when I still lived in town. Now, I don't because I have a mower. <laughs> Actually, I have a shovel and a burn pile. <clears throat> Excuse me. The town also installed smaller poop structures in other areas along with signs that encourage residents to help the town by cleaning up after their dogs. Well, at least you don't have poop police. You just have little inflatables, which is actually kind of fun. So if one of those springs a leak, does it have a noxious smell to it? I'm just curious. This is one of the greatest obstacles to uh, community spirit in our town. If you know a dog, please help us. Or if you own a dog, please help us. Well. If dog poop is one of the greatest obstacles in your community, y'all are doing pretty damn good. Just saying. If all you got to deal with... Okay, wait a minute. Back to the house with the 270 poochie poops. You got it better than that house. At least it's spread out over a bigger area. Just saying. Hi, Juan, a taco. <laughs> uh, random shit must be controlled. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> I don't do well with that. Um, oh, ease counts it easily. Wow. You are just entirely too easy, Vincent Easley. <laughs> I'm so glad others remember that song. <laughs> and Junior Sample. Got, don't forget Junior Sample. BR549. <laughs> oh, Lord. We were... <sighs> Some of the songs, we were doing that the other day at work, actually. Some of us were just, one one of us started it, and next thing you know, we're all sitting there chit-chatting and singing old hee-haw songs and just laughing our asses off. Yeah, it's work. It's hard. It It's tough. But, you know, dirty job, but somebody's got to do it. Okay. Um... Oh, now that's just no fun at all. Hey, here you go. Um, it's a beer me kind of thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go here. Yes, let's go here. Because this one looks even cooler. A chicken is mesmerized by animal documentaries while recovering from injury. Oh, my God. We've even got the chickens watching TV now. My cats won't even watch a video on YouTube. And my dogs, I mean, occasionally if there's like an animal noise coming from the computer, 
the dogs will stop and look at me, but they won't actually watch the shit because they just look at me like, oh, you poor human. Really? That is how you get entertainment. I have a ball. <laughs> they like the ball. They can't find the ball. I don't know what they did with their ball, but. Oh, well, over on Oopy. Chicken mesmerized by animal documentaries while recovering from injury. Wait a minute. I forgot to share the giant poo. Let's see. Oh, I like that, Grammy. Let me read this real quick. Jimmy shared, or Grimmy shared this over on the Effen site. All the word anarchy means is no rules. So, if you say you are not an anarchist, it means that you want a ruler. If you want a ruler, you are a slave. I'm surprised how many people are comfortable publicly identifying themselves as slaves. I am too. Sometimes people just flat ass don't get it. And then they just get so butthurt by it, you know, because, oh my God, you said, no, it can't be true. They actually get violent. It's kind of scary. Kind of scary. Okay, where's the big munch and poo? I'm going to do this because, yeah, that reminds me of uh, Caddyshack. And I know we have a great big turd thing here. There it is. I know it's supposed to be Cookie Monster, but it looks like a big turd eating. <laughs> Baby Ruth. Obscure reference night. There you go. I got a million of them. I just never know when they're going to pop out. <laughs> okay, back to... Back to... Oopy. And then I'm going to have to get out of here. Uh, this is in San Francisco, California, apparently. An injured chicken in California perhaps drew inspiration from videos of other animals during its recovery process. Olivia Fox shared video of her chicken named Strawberry watching animal documentaries on a tablet while recovering from an injury. And what was the injury? Getting entirely too close to a frying pan? Nope, this chicken still has its feathers. Fox said her fiance Brian Larson came up with the idea because Strawberry would often grow antsy and attempt to escape. Probably because she thought, Kay, I'm in pain and I'm in a bag. Oh my God, are there any sharp implements around? That could be what that chicken was thinking. Please don't get the cast iron skillet out. Realizing that she was probably bored out of her mind, no, she was concerned you were going to eat her. Um, why not give her something to watch? So, Strawberry can be seen intently staring at a video while occasionally squawking and pecking at the screen. Fox said the unorthodox method seemed to help keep Strawberry in place and added that she most enjoyed watching the animal videos. It worked like a charm, and her, her favorite channel is National Geographic. Well, isn't that interesting? Or not. I thought it was kind of interesting and kind of dumb. Tacos. <laughs> oh, Vincent, you're entirely too silly. Okay, well, I suppose I'm getting close to the end of the time and I don't want to run over into Vince's time. So, Y'all have been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair with your hostess with the mostest uh, randomness this evening, at least. Grammy Mary here on reallibertymedia.com channel 3. Also on the RLM internet radio station, the RLM tune-in site. Also the RLM Spreaker channel on this Freaker Friday night. Directly following me will be Vin and all his personalities. With, uh, okay, I need to scroll up to see your little blurb again because I forgot it. Uh, World Party Preview Launch. Rounding the Edge on Real Liberty Media. The Bundy Ranch with Vin E. with guest Tom. 
and Tom Stewart, Tom, yeah, uh, Tom and Resurrect the Republic from Resurrect the Republic and Dirty Uncle Sam and, yeah, Chris J. And, ah, uh, jeez, Vance. <laughs> He's got Tom and Dirty Uncle Sam and Chris J. Okay, okay. That's Vince right after me. He's he's the mushy, he's the Vince, he's the easy he's the easy middle between a rocket chair and a freaker's ball. That's all I got to say about that. Also, yeah, directly following Vince with his uh, easily middle is <laughs> is Grimner and Moose Girl with the freaker's ball later on this evening. So a good time will be had by all at least for the rest of the evening and tomorrow morning starting at 10 o'clock. Eastern time is Salvanor with the Salvanor event. Yes, Walter has always got something interesting going on. That's on UCY.TV. Then directly following that here on RLM is the Dork Table with Flash and myself and whomever decides to join in and discuss whatever we're going to be discussing about society and how just messed in the head it is. Then tomorrow afternoon will be Kira with the bridge and directly following her uh, tomorrow afternoon, four o'clock Eastern time, not directly following her, but tomorrow evening will be Bo Diddy with his bodacious tunage. So be sure to check in on that on RLM radio Sunday at noon Eastern Grimner with the blues that will be leading you into Hal Anthony, where he's going to open up a can of whoop ass when he takes you behind the woodshed. And throws some brain food at you, hoping some of it sticks. And if it don't, he's going to whoop it into you. That's all there is to it. I will be back next week, Wednesday, same wackadoodle time. See, as how it's a wackadoodle Wednesday. And you know what? I still have some time. What else do I have to do here? Because I don't want to get out of here yet. I don't want to get out of here that early. Because damn it all, I still have like five minutes. What can I use it up with? Give me something. Give me something I can use. Give me your money. <laughs> I don't want to go there with that damn alligator. Um, let's see. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. You know, people can be so inventive sometimes, and this really is quite inventive unusual but quite inventive and this should finish things out for me nicely a crazy bird lady whereas i'm a crazy rocket chair lady feeds hummingbirds from specially designed dress i do like that dress i don't know that i would wear it out in public but i do like it it's rather fetching on her i'm sure the hummingbirds like it as well a canadian costume designer shared video of her latest creation it's a flower and cup covered dress designed to feed hummingbirds. The video posted by Carrie Campbell to her Paintertainment page on Facebook shows the Whistler British Columbia designer's dress surrounded by more than a dozen hummingbirds that periodically feed from sugar, uh, sugar water filled flowers of the dress. How cool! Campbell said her children banded her the crazy bird lady. Well, my children branded me with all kinds of names like that as well. So it's okay. It's okay. You get, you get used to it. You actually start really enjoying it. This is after she started feeding hummingbirds last year. And the number uh, making regular visits to her home ballooned from two to more than 300. Uh, her first test run of a strolling hummingbird dress... <clears throat> Not sure how I can bring hummingbirds to events, though. Any hummingbird trainers out there, she wrote on her Facebook post. Which, uh, wow, I think you've started the training, hun. All you got to do is walk slowly. You know, like you're walking down the aisle. Wow, wouldn't that be a way cool wedding dress? <laughs> oh, well, I think I have pretty much blathered on long enough. I need to get out of here so Vincent can get on here and do his thing. Out the back of whoop whoop. Oh, hey. <laughs> 
Well, that is kind of a cool dress, though. So Y'all need to check out that. I didn't watch the video yet, but I will as soon as I get done here. So, y'all have an absolutely awesome rest of your evening. Um, is this a Solvener night? Or or not Solvener? Uh, Solomon. No, Solomon was last week, wasn't he? Oh, well. Love you, Solomon. I will be listening in to the Freakers Ball this evening because I will be around this evening.